the night that it happened, you know, I suffered from excruciating back pain from years of jumping out of planes, you know, for the, for the United States Army, 82nd Airborne Division. And at this point, uh, I had, I was on opioids for about six months. My back had went out six months earlier. I couldn't work anymore, couldn't do anything. So for these six months, I had been on these opioids. And uh, what basically happened was that night, I, I, I had kind of a date I was going to go out. And the pain was extra extraordinarily, uh, it was it was worse than it had ever been. So in my, while I'm getting ready to go out, I take, I pop two of my painkillers. And then, you know, after I take those, the pain hadn't gone, gone away. So there's about 15 minutes, I would say. And it, it, uh, the, I took two more, I could say, I took two more of my painkillers thinking, you know, it, I should be fine. Well, as I'm going through my, the, the rest of the evening, another 15 minutes go by, say about, I've been getting ready for 45 minutes. The pain was still there. And so I took two more. I had forgotten I take I had taken those four. I forgot. You know, they, they make you high, but they don't take the pain away after a, after a certain amount of time of taking them. So I had taken two more and I that's when the, the uh, overdose started. You know, I'm, I'm in I'm in my bathroom feeling very sick, uh, sweating more than I've ever sweat before in my life. Um, and I'm leaning over the, the toilet, I'm throwing up and sweats dripping off my body. I, I, uh, then begin, I throw up so much that I can't even throw up anymore. And it's just stabbing pain in my stomach. I fall to the floor and I'm just laying down there on my side thinking to myself, am I dying? You know, uh, what's going on? And then in from from being in excruciating pain uh throwing up to nothing just the pain's gone and i feel myself leave my body pretty much and then after i leave my body i'm cast i'm i'm shot down this tunnel this tunnel of light you know i'm moving fast but i don't feel any wind and then all of a sudden I appear in this place and this place, if I can describe it as it's, if I can describe it space, looking out into space, um, uh, a darkness without stars though, you know, and just a darkness and these beings appear in front of me and they, there's three of them, three beings, one's you know, one's in front of me, two or to the side. And it's a, it's a warm feeling. I could say that it was the greatest feeling I ever felt being there. And at this point, I'm realizing that I'm dying, that I'm dying or dead. And the, the, the feeling that they gave there was just inviting and love. You know, there was nothing but there was only love there. It was the craziest thing. And then I'm standing there and the projection of my life, my whole life starts, you know, it, the life review that I've read so much about now began. And this life review was not just me seeing my life, you know, that was a part of it. But you got to, you had to feel every emotion and feeling that the person you interacted with, the people you interacted with, you felt their emotions too. So as I'm going through this life review, they're showing me the good in my life. And as the, the, the good in my life is going by, they're, they're actually commending me, patting me on the back, you should, uh, sort of, so to speak, saying, you know, this was a good thing you did. This here, you, this was, this was beautiful. And then you get to feel, you know, the emotions that you portray that the person felt, you know, so I, I feel I could feel how good they felt, how great that they felt when I did something good for them. Now, on the other, on the flip side, I got to see all of the bad in my life as well. Now, all of the bad in my life 
they gave me, it was more of a chastisement of sorts. I wouldn't say it was, don't ever do that again. But it was like, uh, the next time you do this, do it this way, you know. But the conviction was so strong because you felt the emotion. Say you got into a fight or, you, you know, uh, I had a fam. My family was big and we never really fought one on one. So if anybody messed with one of my family, my grandmother taught us that we should correct it right there. And all of us take a stand and and pretty much fight. So I felt those emotions of the person, how they felt when there's six people jumping them, you know, and I felt those emotions. I felt how how they felt. I felt how it affected their lives and all of that. And it, it there was other things that I've done in my life, you know, you know, I'm not ashamed to say the, the other bad things that I've done in my life. You could put it in the video. I don't know. But there was the abortion I paid for at one time in my youth, you know, and showed me how that was wrong and things like that. And you could feel the pain and the anguish. So after that, after I, after I saw that, now I'm realizing I'm dying and they pretty much gave me a chance to speak for myself. Well, what do you have to say about this? And now me in my mind, I'm processing all this. At this time, I have a four year old son who is, you know, I'm going to leave behind. And that was the only thing that would have kept me that that kept me from saying, all right, I'm going with you, you guys. I'm going with y'all because this is a beautiful feeling, you know. So I started to think about my four year old son. I started to think about how I didn't fulfill everything that I thought that I wanted to do here on earth. And I began to get upset. And so my reply to them was, look, you sent me down there to the earth plane. You sent me down there. I don't know who is running this. That's exactly the words I say. I don't know who's in charge, you or whoever, but you sent me down there and you didn't show me how to do it. Yet I stand before you and you chastise me about the wrong that I've done. I said, if I go with you, fine. This is a beautiful feeling. Now, going with them, it was already shown to me in my mind what was about to happen. And that was, I'm going to reincarnate, recycle, which I call it now, reincarnate and come back. And I get a chance to do it over again from scratch. But my memory wouldn't, I wouldn't have the memory uh, or anything. It would just be doing it over. I wouldn't remember that I messed up all these times. It, it might come to me. I don't know. But at that point, that's the way I was thinking. And so after I told them, you know, this, T, I said, but if, if I go with you, fine. Um, Cause this is the best feeling that I've ever felt in all of my existence. And this is a beautiful place. And, and, but if you send me back and teach me how to do it, I'll do it right. And the moment I said that is when the everything stopped. And then now there, what lights up in the background of this dark, this dark space was a million of these light forces, just like the three that were in front of me. Millions. I couldn't count them. And they all began to speak something. And what I've come to understand it was they were giving me the knowledge to bring back. And so as they begin to speak to me, these other three beings who were in front of me, um, the, the, the one, the two, two of them moved to the side, I should say, when the life review began, they moved to my peripheral and it was just the one being who was very comforting, a womanly, it was a womanly feeling. And what I believe to this day is that what, what you're presented with, what you get there is something that will make you comfortable. And I guess a woman would make me comfortable. So we project, it projects to whatever you feel, but they're beings of light. Um, so all of these beings of light, this, this million light beings, they began putting things into my conscious, my, my mind. And to, and so I looked at the being and before I could say anything, I thought it, I was like, this is overwhelming. And it spoke to me and said, do not try to understand what they're saying. It was a symphony of, of thunder, 
just loud. I could feel, I could feel something going on in my head. And then as, as they're saying those things, these three beings begin to talk to me. And, and what happened was there was a deal made. The deal was that I can go back. I can go back and that, and, uh, that thing, the one thing that I left that I truly love, that I can be with it and be there for my son. Cause at this time I'm thinking my son is a, he, he's four years old. We're in the United States of America. We live in a place where a young black male doesn't really have a chance if he doesn't have a father figure in this time, in this day and age. So that was what I was, what was on my mind. And so we made a deal and the deal was I come back. I teach what I, what they put in my head, what they put in my head. I come back, I teach that. And, um, I also was given to the secret of how to live my life with peace and joy. And they, as I'm, as, as all this is happening, the being in front of me is speaking is telling me, you know, it gave me, said, I'm going to give you three things that's going to make your life, your walk in this life easy. It's going to be easy. The first thing was to love everything. Love everything because I am everything. These were the words that were spoken to me. Love everything because I am everything. And I believe that this is, this is coming from the creator itself. And that's one, another thing that I didn't see God, you know, that God that everybody depicts. You know, and I love everything. The second thing was fear nothing and fear nothing. What came with a with a instruction an instruction of because fear and doubt are the destroyer of mankind. The other thing that they told me was and know that I am God. I am God. I am. And 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 that was profound to me because it, it, when I heard it, it had a dual meaning at that point that there is some force that we call God that we can't, I can't, what I've known now is not just a single entity. And then there is the God that was within every living thing that gives you the right to say that I am God because we all are in infinite conceptions, infinite forms of that thing we call God. Everything is just an infinite conception of what the thing we call God is. So those were the three things. There was, there was other things that I was told um, I, I'm, I'm working on re recalling right now. Um, Oh, the warning that they gave me about mankind and what what uh, is happening and why we are in this situation that we're in. And it is because we are being manipulated by forces unseen that make us believe that we are using our free will. And we do have free will, yet this is how I can explain it. We have free will, but we are not given all of the choices. So I can use an example. Um, you got free will to, to, uh, and you don't have to use this in you. You have free will to, to choose if you want to take this shot, but yet, if you don't take this shot, you'll lose your job. That's not free will. You didn't have a choice. You really don't. So these are the types of things that happens. You know, we are given and it happens in everything. We are given choices, but not all of the choices. So then we are being corralled into a way of thinking. So these choices that we're given, we think we're making our own free will. But we don't realize we have other choices to make and that those choices that we're making are gradually being led. It's a serious manipulation. These minds that we are dealing with uh, that 
do not like the human race for some reason, they are well, they are way um, more cunning. They've been here longer than the average human being. And, and that was the message. Oh, the, the, the thought, the, uh, where mankind is being manipulated into a way of thinking that is leading us to our destruction. So that's basically what they told me. We're being manipulated into a way of thinking that is leading to our destruction, our, our inevitable destruction. And we must wake up and understand that, that this, um, that this thing will, will ultimately lead to the demise of humanity if we don't, if we don't wake up. And so it was, it was a message that also, you know, that I should come back and teach this, you know, that, that's my, that's my, uh, the promise I made that, that was made and with this deal that was struck up that, okay, you can go back, but this, this, uh, these, this knowledge that we're giving you, teach it and give it to the world because there's an awakening coming and you will be a teacher of this awakening, you know? And so this is what my mission has been ever since, you know, that day in 2013. This is, the book is the culmination the, of what, you know, what this, what I was sent back to do. And for me and myself, for me, I, um, it is a mission because I understand that we all have a finite date here, you know, and I have to stand before those beings again. And so I made this promise to what I call God, that thing that, you know, that I should, that I would do this before my inevitable demise. And that was another thing that I, I really haven't shared with anybody. And that is that they told me when my demise would be, you know, and I'm not supposed to share that date with anybody. I have, I haven't even told my, you know, I, I haven't yeah. told my wife, we discuss it, but, no. but, um, did they told you when your demise will be did that make mm -hmm. you sad did it make you depressed in some in some way or not i'm not asking about a date i'm just asking oh, you know well, already you're <laughs> when you go on to the other you know, side yeah go ahead it made me content with with okay, life so you know, you know right made... now that you have to cherish every moment in your life right right you know, you just, <laughs> that's it that's, that's it the word. yes because you know yes that's you know there is a life after that, after yes. you know, tr transitioning. Yes. You know already. You you lost the fear, and you are. Mm -hmm. and so, are you finished the story? Can I ask questions? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Yes. So, that, that's about the end. I, yeah, about the end. I woke up, you know, and uh, wondering what happened to me. You woke up by yourself. Yes. Yes. Okay. How? Yes, how much I time woke up by myself. Six hours. It was six hours from the time that I was, I was getting ready until the time and, and fell out and the time that I woke up. There was no ambulance call. This is how, you know, a lot of people say, well, how do you know you was dead? Well, this is how I know that there's, there's a power. There's a power that is more, more st strong. Imagine, you know, the, 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 the medicine I took, I should be dead. You know, the amount of medicine I took. That's why I trust in this power, that thing they call God, the power that's within us. I trust it because it has the power to restore this physical body. And, uh, you know, if it's not mangled, that's one of the things I learned, you know, why don't people always come back? Their bodies are too mangled. Why would I want, why would I look, look down from heaven, see that body like that and say, oh, I'm going to go back to that and live the rest of my life like that, especially when you're feeling the most love that you've ever felt. In all of your existence, there was nothing but love there. You know, it, I, I didn't want to leave. But the only thing that helped me, that brought me back was my son. And also, oh, that was another thing was that um, the, the way they sent me back the, a, after they gave me all this knowledge, the, the voice said, think about the one thing on that back in the on the earth plane that you love. And that's what that that started my transition back. And it was my son because I'm telling you, the love over there is so great. You forget about everything you ever did. 
If there's nothing holding you that you don't have a love for, you know, I was separated from my ex-wife. Um, I was single. Um, there was no, nothing that I loved more than my four-year-old son at that time. And I, I focused on that. And next thing you know, I'm waking up to the pain again, the pain everywhere, you know, and, and I'm on that cold bathroom floor and, and, and uh, I'm trying to process <laughs> what just happened, you know, and from there, you know, I was told a lot of things, you know, seek all truth. They told me that seek all truth. Everything you're being told down there is a lie. They, they told there were so many things they were telling me in that, you know, with the million voices and those three beings, there were so many things that they were telling me and seek all truth was one of them. You know, so I get back from the NDE and I, I start this journey, this journey of of cleansing. And uh, I come back with these this this uh, power, I should say, a power or a uh, how can I explain it? I had an affinity for nature. I could see things. I could see auras. You know, I could see I could see. <laughs> it's funny. I told just telling my son this story while waiting at the bus stop. I could see in people's eyes and their auras and I could see if they were good, if they were bad. And those expressions, I, I could feel the expressions on my face as I'm looking at people. So I adopted wearing sunglasses because I didn't want them to see that. I, it felt like they would know they knew that I knew who they were, you know, in settings and in, 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 in like Walmart and things like that, going into malls. And I could I could hear people's thoughts at times and I, I, I could hear and feel people looking at me and I would turn and catch people looking at me. I'm like, I wonder what they see. I started to f understand that their souls were seeing my soul, but they did, they can't comprehend it. As my soul was seeing their souls, I could see them, but they, they were, uh, people were just drawn to look at me for some reason and I couldn't understand it. And it all came to me, you know, through meditation that your soul is bright and inherently their soul, they have a soul and their soul recognizes the light in your soul. You just brought something back from the other side that their soul hasn't seen since it left creation. And so I started to understand things like that. It became this journey. Yeah, this is great. You know, this might mm -hmm. be the analogy, like you were looking at the people and you were like, oh my God, you had to wear your glasses. I can bring mm -hmm. an analogy of a person who is sober in a company of drunk people. Ha! Because, <laughs> yes. Because all these drunk people are suspicious about this, this sober person. You know, he is different. Yes. Like, and you, are, <laughs> yes. you know, I remember myself when I was amongst drunk people, I feel so uncomfortable because <laughs> they act so crazy and I don't know what to do, <laughs> but I don't want to get drunk. <laughs> Right. I've been there. I've been there, too, where yeah. everybody in the room is drunk and I'm sober. And yeah. you, and that's exactly you, your analogy is perfectly right. So, you know, this journey started and, and I started to. I should say I started to hear. I wanted to I wanted that feeling back. This is what started me on the meditations and all of that. I wanted that feeling of the most beautiful love that I've ever felt in all my life. I wanted to go back there. And so I found ways, I started searching ways to get back to that feeling. And what I found through, I've done a lot of things like I've, I've taken DMT, you know, I've, I've, I started to understand the law of attraction and how, and, and the power of I am, whatever I speak, I become. You know, um, the DMT, it helped me a little, but I found that meditation is is the most powerful way to to get anything to what I learned. I learned how to meditate, which took some time. You know, it took some time. And as I'm meditating, I begin to hear this voice that reminded me when I was in the Christian church of that small little voice that guides you. And this voice was very prominent. Now it was as if my, my intuition was heightened. My, uh, my love for nature was heightened. 
um, and this voice would speak to me and it guided me. It told me things to do. I mean, I'd be meditating. There was one, there was this one, I, you know, I was not working. Here's, this is an example of this voice speaking to me. So I, I was not working. My unemployment ran out. My back had went out. That's the reason why I, I, I wasn't working. And I needed some money to pay my electric bill. And I had an appointment in the city, Pittsburgh, at the VA this day, and I meditated that morning, and I didn't even have a vehicle at the time. My father, I was supposed to get his car, and he was going to let me take it that afternoon, go to the VA for my appointment for my back. And so I began to meditate, and I said, you know, I need this money, and the voice said, go to the casino, right? And I said, I can't even get to the casino. I said, you know what? While I was meditating, I said, you know what? I'm going to I let you do it. If, if Make it possible. Show me a sign that you're talking to me and telling me what to do. Well, as I'm meditating in my living room, my dad, who wasn't supposed to be there till noon, it was probably 730 in the morning. My dad is knocking on the door. And he, sh I, I'm like, all right, I'm going to leave this meditation. I'm going to answer the door. I get up, I answer the door, and it's my dad. And he's like, Jeff, uh, for some reason, I just want to give you the car early today. And uh, that way, you know, we don't have to co co uh, corroborate. We don't have to do this later on this afternoon. So that was the voice telling me, you know, that was the voice working in my head. It said, and so I said, oh, wow, I can hit the casino right there in the city just before I go to my appointment. Right. I can leave now as soon as I drop my dad off. So this is exactly how it happened. I drop my dad off. I go to the casino. I win two hundred and fifty dollars in about less than 30 minutes. I leave the casino and go to my appointment. <laughs> I have my appointment and there I had my electric bill. That That's just one story of many. And that's I started to lean on this voice. After this voice showed me that, I began to listen and follow every instruction it told me. And it's only led to a beautiful life, you know. And after a while, you know, some months had gone by and I started wondering, who is this voice that is speaking to me? And so why don't you just ask in meditation? So I get into a, I go into meditation. I actually pull up a meditation that from YouTube that's like, find your spirit guide, find who's. And sure enough, I get go into this guided meditation and the voice speaks to me. And that's when it revealed who it was. And its name is Metatron. You know, it's an angel. It's my guardian. I call it my guardian, my higher self. Its name is Metatron. And I was like, when I first came into the knowledge of this name, I, I didn't know who, who's Metatron. Sounds like some cartoon character from the 80s, you know, and and uh, I had to research. I started to research who this Metatron has come to find out. He's one of the archangels, uh, the book of Enoch. Uh, what I've learned is that this Metatron was Enoch in the flesh. He uh, was called up. We only see a bit, little bit of it in the Christian Bible. Um, it's more in the in the uh, the Jewish Torah. Um, and this being has been with me ever since. You know, I kept it from my my closest friends. My my uh, I kept it from most of my friends for a long time. My family, my wife was the only one who knew about it, and I I didn't need I didn't tell her until you know we didn't meet until 2017. So you got to imagine this happened in 2013. Metatron has been with me since I came back. I get to know this this being and it not only does it, it it teaches me in my meditations. It guides me. It warns me. It tells me of imp impending things coming to humanity. Um, the death that was coming to the world. It told me in 2018 to prepare, you know, and it told me what to what to look for. I don't speak about it out here on 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 uh, on, on the Internet. Because there is this this force on earth that don't allow us to speak much about this thing. And so it showed me, it guided me, it guided me and my immediate family on what actions to take, 
we're all healthy. We've all we've been healthy, you know, but what it also showed showed me this Metatron is what I'm talking about. What it also showed me is that this body is the most magnificent machine that was ever made and that it heals itself. And if you put the right things in it, you will st always be healed. There will be people falling at the wayside sick. I, I rarely get sick, you know, rarely because of, I believe one, the meditations to what I put, I know what I put into my body. The meditations are healing in itself, you know. Um, so this being Metatron, he he guides me. There's many, many, many things that I've done that are that would seem miraculous to most that became miraculous to me. You know, and I always talk about the biggest thing was when my nephew was in a coma. You know, he he was in a coma in 2016 because he did something, you know, that wasn't basically teenager in in high school they had this game that they played and it was the game they played was uh on friday they would bring their parents medicine and any medicine they could get their hands on they would swap it out and everybody would take some and he took the wrong stuff and fell into a coma and this was you know 300 miles away in the state of virginia where my brother lives and he called me and said jeff man my son's in a coma they're going to pull the plug on sunday you know, and uh, it was Friday and it, I I had gotten so busy, believe it or not. I'd gotten so busy that I didn't go into meditation that night. I meditated, but I didn't meditate about that. So Saturday night came around. I, Saturday, I was like, oh, my God, I forgot to. Saturday night came around and I went into meditation and this was profound. It's in the book. I go into meditation and Immediately, I talk to Metatron. I'm like, what can I do? And he takes me to the second heaven. He takes me to a place where where um, nothing but kids there. There's nothing but children. And, I, and it is my belief they were all in comas. They were all had a foot. They were either going on to the actual second heaven to be uh, reincarnated, going on to glory, to the third heaven, or they were in limbo. And that's where my I, I run into my nephew. I meet with the spirit of what I would call Jesus Christ, Jesus, or whatever you want to call it. It's not that image that they depict that's on top of uh, Rio de Janeiro with his arm sticking out. I can tell you that. But anyway, um, he was there. It was there comforting every soul in there. And I, and I run into my nephew there and, and we have a conversation. And the conversation is. You sh you need to come back. Your your father, your your stepmother, your sister, they're all grieving over you right now. They're they're tore up. And he was he told me, uh, all right, I'm coming back. But he said it in, in, in this realm. You can't really much lie because you can see right through it. So I was like, I didn't feel he was telling the truth. I said, come on, you got things that you're going to do in this life that's going to help people. You should come back. And they're not mad at you. That was his other thing. They're mad at me because I said, no, they just want to see your smiling face when you wake up. They want it. You'll, they want to see you smile. They're, you'll see their spaces. When you wake up, they'll be smiling. Believe me. And um, we talked some more. I told him about what his life was going to be because I was given a picture of that as I'm speaking. And all the while, Metatron's right here. But and Jesus is over there. The, the light being I call Jesus was over there. He's comforting all of these children. And we speak and he he, con he convinced me that he's coming back this time. You know, he's like, all right, I'm coming back. But I just want to stay here a little while longer because this feeling is the best feeling I've ever felt in all my life. And I was like, yeah, I know this is a great feeling, ain't it? And I said, all right, they'll be expecting you. So I wake up. I come out of the meditation. We depart. I come out of the meditation and immediately I text my brother. I said, he's going to wake up. I had a conversation with him. Um, we spoke and I told him, you know, I just basically repeated what I just said. And um, I went to sleep. It was about two in the morning. I went to sleep. I wake up to a text from my brother saying that he's awake. And Everything you said, confirmation. He woke up and actually told the same story 
that I told my brother when I woke up from the meditation at two in the morning, his son wakes up that morning and tells the same story that he ran into who he thought. He, now, you got to understand, I hadn't seen my nephew in seven since he was like six years old. So he he's 15, 16 at the time. So he thought they surmised that maybe it was my brother who had been killed years, years ago. You know, because they hadn't heard the, my story yet. My The rest of the family hadn't heard. Only my big brother knew this story. And he's the only one that really knew that I told him hours before his son woke up that he was going to wake up. And so my other brother who immediately drove to Virginia, he was down there when it happened. You know, he surmised that, well, maybe it was my other brother because he hadn't heard the story that I told, you know. And so. It was that. And then I told, you know, I told my brother because Metatron told me, don't tell anybody. Don't tell anybody but your brother. So I told my brother, don't tell nobody that this happened. But there's text confirmations and everything about this. And, you know, it was even it was so great that my brother, he's like, come on down and visit with my son. Come see us. We need to talk. You know, so I made plans to come down, visit with him. You know, thank me for what happened, for what they did. They know. They know and my family knows. And that's all. That, and, and when I look back on it, it was for my edification. Also to help him because now he's a firefighter in the in, in a major city in Virginia. You know, he's a firefighter, which saves lives, you know. So that was one of the, the biggest things that happened. But there's so many daily. I listen to this voice and I, I miss everything that bad that would happen to me and the people that surround me because I follow this this voice, the, the God within me as what you call it, your higher self, your guardian angel. I've just been put in tune with it. And the the biggest thing that I was taught, one of the other biggest things that I was taught is that we all have this. And that's what the book teaches, that we all have this power and that you can awaken it. It awakens in everybody. It's been taken from us somehow and our, our light does not shine as it should in this world. Um, we're corralled into a way of thinking that leads us down the wrong path, that dims our light. Um, and as I studied, because when I came back, I was charged with searching all truth as well. So now you got to imagine I'm working on my disabled status with the military, so they're not paying me anything. Um, I don't have a job. I don't have any job. No money coming in, period. My saving grace was I owned this house free and clear. I don't know own a mortgage on it or anything. That was my saving grace. I used this power to understand what divine providences everything i needed i woke up i went into meditation and asked for it and it appeared one day here's how crazy it is one day i wanted to i wanted to experience dmt to see if it would get me back to that place i looked up at the universe and i said i want to experience dmt period full stop Nothing else. Don't put anything else behind it. This is how you manifest. And so, and I just left it at that. I didn't doubt it. I, I, I only believed that it would make it happen. How about, now DMT, let me explain DMT. It is, it is more, it is a higher scale than cocaine, fentanyl. You can get, in, this is more legal than those drugs for some reason. It's more legal. How about, one day I'm I'm at home and it was only about a week and a half after I asked for this. I get a knock on the door and some friends come. These people standing at the door with a gift and they're like, we're your new neighbors. We just wanted to bring you a housewarming gift and maybe speak with you. I invited these two brothers in. They were brothers. And uh, I sat them down and we began to talk, you know, this was shortly after my near death experience. So that's the only thing I could talk about. You know, my near death experience, how we create this reality that we live in. And, you know, and they 
began to show me signs that they were awakened to a degree. And we started talking about things and they asked, the question came up, you ever did DMT? And I said, no, but I just asked the universe last week if I could do it. He said, and this is what the brother said, you're in luck. We got some and we're going to allow you to experience it. This is how it happened. But there were there are many things like that. So I experienced DMT. I did see I saw many things in DMT and it does awaken you to a certain degree of consciousness. Yet it's not that authentic thing that puts you there like transcendental meditation does. That's what I that's my 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 uh, my take on it. Now I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. With the DMT, did you see different images or similar yeah. ones that you've seen in your in your near death experience? I saw similar images. There were truths that were revealed to me during DMT. Um, I saw similar images. Yet there were things that were sketchy to me, like the jester. When people people talk about the jester that they see. It's like if you if the, the classic image of the jester or the joker, this thing danced around in, in those DMT and some of those DMT experience. I, I did it seven times, you know, um, and, you know, throughout the course of about a month, I, I did it seven times. Um, the jester, um, this this thing of this liquid machine that I that I encountered that I was a part of that was it was it was strange. It was weird. But there were truths. There were truths. There was one DMT experience where love. This love was in the form of a woman, a beautiful woman, and she had this long flowing dress on and it flowed in the wind. And I could say that love was about as far as the eye can see, it was away from me. And it began to walk to me towards me. And love just flowed. This was the whole DMT tea trip. I'm watching love walk towards me in this beautiful gown. And it walks from a mile from as far as the eye can see, and it gets right up in front of me. And then it just walks inside of me and stays there. And the DMT trip is over. That was a beautiful one, you know, where love just walked inside of me and stayed there. But why you decided to do the DMT? Because you were so high vibration, I would say, awake and actually uh, almost like. I guess I, yeah. I guess, I guess I, uh, I, I. The timeline's kind of wrong. So this was early in the when I first got back. I, I, I experienced this DMT. So when I first got back, I, it was I was working on meditation. I wasn't good at it. You know, it, it took me a while to get good at meditation. I didn't, you know, to get to get to where I could, I was comfortable and I could get there. So the DMT came in between me being, you know, uh, mastering this meditation thing. And yeah. uh, so that's how the DMT came in. Yes, it was so like looking for. A, a, so you're searching for the same experience, for a similar experience that you yes. experienced. You wanted, you wanted so hard, so badly that you decided to do DMT, but now you don't need that anymore, right? Yes, exactly. Now you mentioned, uh, Jeff, you mentioned Jesus and you said mm -hmm. that it doesn't look, it, it looks nothing like the Jesus in, like Jesus in mm -hmm. Rio de Janeiro what it looked like. Mm -hmm. Can you describe it? Light. Just light. Okay, but how this is This glowing you know? light. Okay. You That's what that I'm, you? the feeling. Yes, the feeling that it gave you. There was a glowing light in the feeling that it gave you with that. This is the highest form of love and creation that you could witness at this moment. That's how I came to the conclusion it was Jesus. Okay. So this is what probably true believing Christians experience. The light, mm -hmm. Jesus as light, as love, mm -hmm. powerful feeling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, now you yeah. mentioned three stages here. I don't know how to say it. 
You said there is limbo, there is the second heaven, and there is the third <clears throat> heaven. Can you describe oh, oh. Yeah, each one shortly? What okay. do you mean by that? Okay. So, okay. The first heaven is this realm that we exist in. This is the first heaven. And this is the physical, physical realm. Then there is the second heaven. This is the spiritual, spiritual world, which can be, you can get there through meditation, or this is where, this is what I call the spirit world. Or we'll call it the spirit world or the land, but I call it the land between life because on one side you got heaven and on the other side you have earth. And in between is the second heaven, which I call you know, I, I've come to call it the land between life because it sits between heaven and earth. It is the place where all things manifest in the beginning. The first thing, your thought, it comes from that place. The thoughts that you project go to that place. Um, this place is a magical place. You can do anything. Here is where I go to manifest what I want on earth. So if I want a thing, if I want things to happen, I go into this meditation and I go to what I call the second heaven. This place, there's, there's beings of light there. There are dark spirits there. This is the place where people who, who mess with Ouija boards and the dark forces, they dwell there too. All of that is there. And what I've learned about this second heaven is as long as you keep the light of love in your heart, and your intentions are pure. You can traverse this second heaven freely. Nothing will attach itself to you. And because these, these dark forces, they cannot. Then this is what Metatron taught me. This is how he taught me in, in my meditations. These dark forces cannot come close to you because you have the light of love in you. It, 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 it's like once we, he took me on a journey through past all of these dark beings. And I'm like, why aren't they touching us? Why aren't they even, they're scary, they're this. And he's like, they won't, they can't because darkness cannot dwell in light and they're only dark. You keep the light of love and you, and you can traverse this second heaven as much as you want. Um, the saying as above, so below, whatever you ask for in the second heaven, it will appear down here. If you believe and you know, and you, uh, I would say if you believe and you 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 put it into in your intention. Um, they showed me that we have the power to manifest anything we want. You know, we have the power to do anything we want. If we can get this world on that accord, it would be it would change instantly. Okay, so there was the second oh, heaven. So let second me just, heaven. Oh, I, yeah. Okay, okay, so we have also the third heaven you mentioned. The third heaven. Okay, the third heaven. Now, this is what I call the heaven. The the place that, that everybody calls heaven, the place that Christians want to go, Muslims want to go, heaven, third heaven. What is it? It's a place where your where your soul returns to. It's the place that I'll call God. You know, I can't put a name on it. I, I still you it's whatever you want to call that thing. Um, it dwells, but it is not a single entity. Imagine the collection of all souls, beings of light, all together there. That's heaven, the warmest place, the best, the, the place that our souls long to go. Heaven, what is it? It's not physical. I was shown it at a distance. I was not allowed to enter the, the third heaven. You know, I was shown it at a distance and it was just, it was light. It was light. And I also was shown that we all have a connection to it. There's a, a cord that runs from our this this area in, in the physical, but it's it's not a physical cord. And it all beams a light back to the third heaven. We all beam that light back to the third heaven, which makes it so bright and so beautiful. And not only that, whatever created this existence, it it, it is everything. So basically, it if you can imagine that there was this thing called a creator and it said, I want to experience what I am and it fractionally sent out into infinite 
uh, conceptions of what it is so that all everything can come back and give a report on what you are, this thing called that we call God. So what we do is we go out and we experience and we bring back that experience to heaven, which is stored in this, what I have come to know as the Akashic record of everything that exists to exist and has existed. So I understand that that from your story, that that light, the third heaven, it was not available to you. You didn't get there because that, no. that place is a place of no return. If you go there, you disappear into the light. I'm just correct me mm -hmm. if I'm wrong. I'm just verbalizing mm -hmm. here, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. trying to make sense of what you said. So for our listeners to understand too. So the third heaven, if you would made it there, you would disappear into the light. You would never come yeah. back. You made you would it be a second. part of the yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, you made it only to the second heaven. You had a glimpse of the beauty of heaven. And now people who reincarnate, they only get to the second heaven. They never disappear completely never, into the light. Ex right exactly. Now? That's what, I, what I've come to understand. Okay, so now my question is this. If you make it to the third heaven, you die completely, you disappear into the light, do you still maintain your personality? Are you still Jeff? Are you still the same consciousness when mm -hmm. you are one with the light so, and you become like everything else? Yes, um, you you become a part of 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 the uh, the whole Akashic record, and it is my understanding what I've been taught that you can go there, and it's a place of of rest. It's a place of love and you can you can dwell there as long as you want. And that personality, that soul, it's yours for eternity. And what I'm understanding, what I've understand is that you can take on soul missions. And the reason I'm here is it's it's a total soul mission. It's it's that I've been sent here to do these things and you're excited to do them when you're there. From what I'm understanding, you're excited because you understand while you're there that, you know, there was a lady on your show that put it into perspective. And, I, and when she said it, I was like, that's it. You're there. She, she spoke about how she was in heaven with a bunch of people and they were all excited to go down to earth. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and it's like, uh, yeah, you're excited to do this mission because you understand while you're there that nothing's really going to happen to you. you're going to experience pain you know you're going to experience and i think you know when what, i've come to the conclusion that that's about all you experience that's different because pain and 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 uh tragedy and suffering are the things that are here they're not there so it's like i guess it's like anything else you know you're like you you'll see if, if i was list sitting right here and i saw you know what if i go over there and get in that gunfight yeah I'll get killed, but guess what? I'll 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 be right back in this seat. I wouldn't hesitate to get into the gunfight, you know, because once I after I die over there, I'm gonna be sitting right back here. So that's what heaven kind of is, you know. You're sitting in this seat, you're looking down, and you say, "All right, I'm ready to go down. I'm ready to go down and do this mission for love for humanity." And you go do it. You return. And I don't, I, I really don't have the answers of how long you'll stay. I just know the answers of this journey that I'm on, you know, and hopefully it can wake some people up to their journey as well. Yeah. There is no time over there. So you don't know how long. Yeah. Yeah. There's no time. And one more thing. How about limbo? You mentioned limbo. How do you explain limbo? How do you describe it? Um, Limbo, I don't, maybe I, I misspoke, but limbo, limbo for me is that, that, uh, soul trap that you put yourself in where you don't continue your mission. You fail it. You die. You come back, reincarnate. You go back to earth. You come back. It's just a circle until you finish your, your soul's journey like me. And in the book, it, it shows that I've, I've reincarnated many times.
you know. And you remember the incarnations? Yeah, I remember some of them. Metatron showed me a lot of, of reincarnation, showed me from the beginning of my start here. And also um, the last, I saw one, uh, an older one where I was in, it was more or less a, a, a 1800s garb where I killed somebody, you know, um, 1800 dress or whatever. Um, I saw, I saw, and the last one, which the last reincarnation, which from a child, I always believed that it happened to me from a child. I've always believed that I was killed in the Vietnam war and that was my last reincarnation. Then I was born in 71. So so that was pretty quick reincarnation because the Vietnam War was in the 60s. So you just yeah, came this, right back. Yeah. Yeah, this reincarnation happens quickly. And, and I, you know, when I, like I said, I studied so much. I had so much time on my hands because I was, you know, I was, I couldn't work. I couldn't move. I couldn't do anything. Um, I went and I actually looked up who, what soldiers died in Vietnam on my birthday. You know, I've actually looked that up to see because they have a record of when these soldiers died and everything. And uh, haven't I haven't come to a full conclusion of who that person might be. I, I really don't want to dive down that hole, you know, because of it's in the book of what what these things can do if if we remember our previous life. Um, so, yeah, that was the last reincarnation I believed and you know after all these years and what I've been through it's come to be a true thing for me it was just a suspicion growing up as a child you know there was other suspicions I had like it's in the book like as a child I believed that we never died you know we never truly died and that we just reincarnated it was innate in my in my thinking yeah well children are much more uh intuitive than the adults right a lot of children they hear their spirit guides since they, <laughs> since, since, you know when they are little they do they spirit they even see they talk to them mm -hmm. nobody believes them they say you crazy you know you got to take some medication yeah. or something and when they grow up they forget about it and they kind of yes. say okay i was uh, that's that's very common in children because they're more open yeah that's more it yeah that's that's in the book too because i did I, I i saw my spirit guide back then as my grandfather who i never met he was always with me i never met him he died before i was born i believe you know and and he was my spirit guide for a long time until my great grandmother passed you know and then she became my spirit guide then i had this near-death experience and i realized my spirit guide or this it was just forms of those to keep me comfortable it was forms of those people who loved me or I loved to keep me comfortable because I was a I was a child that that could sense things. You know, when I was young, I could sense spirits and they would kind of scare me. It's in the book. <laughs> it's, it's about, you know, they, they would they would scare me. Well, let's talk a little bit about the book. Jesse. Tell us, uh, please, yeah. um, to our viewers, uh, what's the name of the book? And uh, where we can people find more about the book, about you, you know, if you'd like to share the information. Yes, yes. Um, you know, my name's Jeff Cleckley. Um, I'm on Facebook. And if you go to Facebook, you'll see my posts. You know, my posts are, are only about uh, love, light and doing and better for people to better themselves in this existence. Um, the book itself. It's called I Walk Amongst Gods. You know, um, it was what it was the concept that came to me from right after my near death experience. I had been wanting to write this book. I meditated on it. Metatron told me this is what I told you was supposed to happen. You know, so it was a go. And um, Dave Brew is my co-writer, co-author. He's on there. Um, and that's who it is. My co-author helped me write this book. 